Many coastal communities are already experiencing the devastating impact of climate change. In Lagos, Nigeria, a low-lying area is being submerged by flood, affecting schools, worship centers and businesses in the area. This, among other environmental issues, will be examined on this week's edition of Green Angle. Welcome. I am Esther Makwariola. It had been a trying moment for residents and traders of Idumago and environs on Lagos Island after being forced to adapt to a situation caused by rising sea levels and poor drainage system. While this has been a recurring disaster, the state authorities have promised to find a lasting solution. This is not a river or lagoon, but a low-lying community on Lagos Island submerged by flood. The situation here has made life unbearable for residents, traders and shop owners at Oroyini, Ujugiwa, Idugoro and Jankara. Behind me you can see the level of stagnation in this market and traders here find it increasingly difficult to make sales because customers aren't forthcoming. They are asking the government to quickly come to their aid. Many here have devised means to stay above the water or simply get through it, even as their schools, streets and mosques have been taken over by the floods. They tell me they have spent lots of money to clear the drains, but nothing changed, only got worse with time. We have a Saleko Grammar School here that's covered. They pass through this particular place. We have King Adu, we have St. Patrick here, you understand? Like four schools that surround this particular place. So if rain fall, nobody will be able to access this particular area again. And this thing makes us lose many customers. Most of our customers live here, go to Alaba and buy. Some go here, go to Computer Village and get what they need, you understand? So they are, they are putting this place as no going area for a customer. We are losing many times. We invested a million in this particular place. You know the Nigerian economy is very good. So you can imagine a, 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 a family man waking up from his uh, house and coming to his business area and he can assess his business area. If you can assess your business area, is it your customers who assess the business area? But this situation can be best described as disaster. And this is just April. We are in April. May has not come. June, the month of rain has not come. So if this can be like this in April, you can imagine what it will be in July. Not too far from one of the markets in the vicinity is a canal meant to collect wastewater into the lagoon. But the low-lying nature of this area makes it difficult for water to get into the drainage channel. There was a mild drama between some traders and local government officials. The officials were accused of not making the environmental challenge any better, despite collecting levies meant for sanitation. But the residents claim the source of their problem is from an ongoing construction at Ilubiri Estate, where an embankment has been constructed, preventing free flow of water into the lagoon. And at the site, we see some pipes at the embankment, which are being powered by a diesel generator, pumping water from the canal into the lagoon. A Lagos state official here tells me the embankment is to prevent an ocean surge from the lagoon into the mainland due to recent rise in sea levels. We are pumping near day and night. We didn't stop. They have brought the other, another pump here as other epic strategy to pump the water into the lagoon. Before, we do experience a lot of water concentration. 
But immediately, we apply the skills and the knowledge of uh, casting here. The water inflow to the community is lesser. In the meantime, the state authorities say a permanent solution over the incessant flood is underway, as well as a reconstruction of the drainage outlets. So what we are doing presently that you saw at Ilubini is temporary measure that is meant to alleviate the suffering. So we have four pumps that is running now, though that is not the capacity that is required. The capacity is about 3,000 cubic meter per second. So that will come in within the next six months. As I said, it is not something that you get off the shelf. It is something that we have to place in order. That has been done. We will get that within the next three, four months while the civil works will take. That's why I said within the next six months, you have it running. While residents anxiously wait on the government to keep its promise, even as the rainy season continues to gather momentum, it will take a lot more than patience if things are to turn around for the better. Rising sea levels are one of the effects of climate change and so low-lying communities are prone to experience some devastating impacts. An environmental activist and a writer, Joe Fitila, shares his thoughts on this while providing sustainable solutions. It is sad that we're actually talking about this. And sadly, I'm still going to blame it on the government. You know, when we talk about Lagos Island being flooded, it's not new. It's been like that year in, year out. And we have the same problem with Magodo. So, in Magodo, I have some close friends that they have one story building and they abandoned the floor because of the drainage. And they built, they reconstructed their house to feed to the drainage. And here is the problem with the government. You don't tell people that you keep having flooded environment because you are you built your houses on low lands. That's an excuse that won't fly. You are telling me that restructuring cannot be place in motion? Are you telling me that changes cannot be made? Are you saying that every aspect or every time that is a rainy season, people in Lagos Island should expect that their, their, their area is going to be flooded because the government cannot do anything about it? That is laziness. We can, they, they can be restructured. There's no place that cannot be restructured. Even though if the place is low, you are some feeling other places that the water actually needs to to, to get itself back into the into the lagoon. You are still feeling the place. You are saying that Lagos Island is low. Water don't actually have any other place to go than to enter into the place through the drainage. So, and what if I tell you that there's a, they don't would see that as an imminent problem, but what if I tell you that there's even a worse problem that is going to be connected to the rising of temperature or the global warming? or the climate change. What if tsunami takes place in Lagos? Will Lagos Island survive a tsunami attack? People don't think about it because we believe we're on this side of the world where uh, we are not uh, uh, built on the tectonic plates that we are saved. But that is not how climate change works. Climate change simply means you are going to be experiencing different climates from the ones for a very long time and once a tectonic plate moves somewhere else it can trigger tsunami as far as ghana and from the from the coastal region it can still get to lagos and the people in lagos island that they say does the government have measures for such catastrophe if it happens those are the things we should we should be talking about We, we, we saw what happened to Morocco, right? All in this country, we saw what happened to Morocco. But now we don't talk about Morocco anymore because the people in Morocco, they have moved up. We are seeing what is happening in Lagos-Badagri Expressway. They demolish all the houses. 
because of restructuring. They want to have five lane and a train line. And it's already happening. So if Lagos Island, if the life of people in Lagos Island is something that the government really cares about, I don't see why restructuring should be a problem. Because let me tell you something. There should, you should think about the reason why you should restructure than ignoring restructuring. One, if you restructure, you, it's not mandatory you demolish. Demol, demolition may be, maybe it's even better for you to demolish a house than for that house to collapse on itself and kill all the people around that place. It is better for you to restructure buildings that are weakened because of consistent flooding than for those buildings to collapse and destroy mini lives meaninglessly. It is better for you to restructure an environment completely, evacuation completely, than for you to leave it that way and allow millions of people to die abruptly by reason of negligence. So I think if that's what the government needs to do, we better start thinking about it and start thinking about it fast. Everything we are doing is actually for the people. Why? If the government do not restructure and we neglect that environment, the houses are going to fall and kill who? The people. If the government restructure the environment and it's now better for people to live in, who are the people that are going to be happy and safe? The people. So in whatever way we want to see it, it's actually a win-win for the people. But we know that people find it very hard to embrace change. And that's where the problem is. Maybe because of level of poverty in the country, people will be wondering, if I leave this place, where am I going to go? Those that have built their houses, now with the present economical situation, they may not be able to even afford another land or even build house. Then the government needs to pay some price also. What's wrong with building estate in partnership with other people, with other companies or other mortgage companies, and then you give land or you give houses to people that already have property in that place or you pay them or you buy the place over then you restructure and make your money back right now let's try and paint a picture if as i'm talking to you right now there's a seismic vibration and there's earthquake and houses are sinking or falling into the sea in Lagos Island. If such thing happen right now, do you think the Nigerian government have anything set in motion that can save at least 90% of the victim? I think we already know what the answer is. The answer is no. If we have excess temperatures we are having in the environment now, it means there's going to be excess evaporation. If we have excess evaporation of water, it means we'll have excess condensed water in the cloud. If I have excess condensed water in the cloud, it means during the rainfall, we're going to have excess downpour. When we have excess downpour, what's going to happen? It means places that have never been flooded before are going to experience flood. And if those places have never been flooded before, they have never experienced, they don't know how to go about it. There's going to be excess casualties. And all these are what the government needs to put in place. The, the, the structure, what, Lagos is practically an island. We have water everywhere. What, uh, what avenue are you creating for the channels of this water? Do you know you can create channels from Lagos to other states that don't even actually have water? So that as the water level is rising, it is passing through a channel to places that don't even have water. So it will even help before the water level can rise to the point of drowning or consuming a particular place. You already have the water dispensed. And as we're seeing all this, in, there's a place called Ayetoru in uh, Ibola in um, Kondo State. Right now, most of the places that used to be part of the town have actually slided into the sea. People are not talking about it. Nobody is saying anything about it. The government is not saying anything about it until Ayetoru will no longer exist in Kondo State. Those of you that have never heard of that, that Dasan is the first sci-fi novel written and published in Africa by Jewel Fitila, myself. So the book is actually talking about climate change and how it affects the world on a global scale. You know, we talk about plants, the same way we talk about climate change, but we talk about plants in a passive way too. 
we, we have been taught in school that plants are living living organisms. But we don't, we are not conscious of the fact that what it means for plants to be living organisms. So in the book, we saw nature revolt against mankind. We saw nature fighting back. Somebody will say, oh, it is fiction. Ah, come on, such things can never happen. But day in, day out, every day, even as I'm talking to you, nature is actually fighting back. You put dump in the gutters, the drainage systems are, are blocked. The water we find is waste. Water we always find is waste. It will destroy the land, it will cause landslide, it will destroy houses because you, you block its main channel. That's the same way nature fight back. You pollute the atmosphere with greenhouse gases. Temperature will increase. Nature will fight back. The ozone layer will be uh, 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 depreciated and there will be excessive temperature and people will cry more. So for whatever thing you do, nature is actually fighting back because it's fighting in a very slow pace. For those of us that if, you, if you've been in, 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 in countries that are prone to natural disasters, you will indeed be conscious of climate change. You need to understand that you will directly impact this climate change. If you are conscious of that, you will be careful of taking your car that has problem with its exhaust out in the open. One, the noise that the exhaust is going to make, the pollution, the carbon dioxide emission that your vehicle is going to be creating to people that are around. So some even have the carbon, di uh, uh, the, the, the carbon dioxide flowing inside the same vehicle and passengers are inhaling it without knowing the implication in their health. So we have a lot of things to do in Nigeria. We have a lot, of, a long way to go when it comes to climate change. Green Angle returns after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's turn our focus to the climate crisis, which is believed to intensify in the coming decades. In a recent report by an intergovernmental panel on climate change, the world needs to take action seriously to become more climate resilient in the face of rising global temperatures. Intense heat waves, drought, wildfires, storms and floods are some of the impact of climate change which are now irreversible and scientists say without action, worse is coming. Currently, nearly 3.5 billion people are highly vulnerable to climate impacts, and this is projected to increase from 50% to 75% by the end of the century. In a new report authored by hundreds of the world's top climate scientists, the window of opportunity for action is brief and rapidly closing, and in the words of UN Secretary General, delay is death. There is no kind way to put it. The 1.5 degree goal is on life support, it is in intensive care. In addition to these concerns, the report stated that if warming reaches 4 degrees Celsius, half of all plants and animals will be threatened with extinction. Many coastal communities most vulnerable to climate change due to rising sea levels could disappear in a few decades. Our houses, even the central marks, the central marks of the community, everything has been washed away. If you go down to the other side now, after about four or five, four or five shows, you see, you see how the water has turned the area. And in the Sahel region, usual little rainfall is made even worse with rising global temperatures. This will lead to increased drought and a scramble for scarce resources which often triggers conflict between resident farmers and cattle herders. The mechanisms are very far, far apart and are not easily attainable. So only these people are doing communities now to survive is just to move. You get displaced by climate and yet you are moving and there's nobody to help you settle in a new location. You're having more conflict with other people who don't want you to intrude into their spaces. So we, the crisis is enormous. But to deal with this climate crisis, which scientists say could affect the existence of mankind, 
investment in adaptation measures, among other strategies, experts say need to be put in place to reduce carbon footprint and preserve this planet for everyone. People need to be conscious, people need to be um, aware. So where is my food waste going to? So if I know that this, my food waste goes to the dump side, it causes methane, gas, you know, and all of that. So why should I still contrib contribute to, you know, the crisis, the climate crisis? So what can I do? I can compost my waste, my food waste. Let me learn how to compost my food waste. And when I learn how to compost, I can grow my own food naturally without using any synthetic fertilizer or pesticides. Stop extracting more coal, more gas, more oil and burning these resources because this is what is taking up the space in the atmosphere that can safely be occupied by greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and the rest. Government has to build roads and build infrastructure in a way that we don't sand field our water bodies that's supposed to absorb rainfalls when, when, when that happens. We, we should not be what they call reclaiming. Reclaiming land is actually a very, is a very negative way to, to construct. It means that we are not taking climate change serious. Uh, and so, so other things we can do is, of course, planting trees. The Great Green Wall that's supposed to start from Djibouti to Dakar is something that every government that that, that plant wall cuts across should invest all the resources needed to ensure that that wall succeeds. While the signs and solutions are clear on how to combat climate change, even as the world tries to move away from fossil fuels and cut down carbon emissions by 2050, it is also believed that investing in education, health systems and social justice could help people cope with the impacts of rising temperatures if we are to guarantee a lifeline for the next generation. The major challenge of waste management is the non-challenged attitude of residents who aren't ready to do what is right. And that's according to the managing director of the Lagos State Waste Management Agency, Ibrahim Udumboni, during a one-day stakeholders meeting on public health and environmental management protection law in Lagos. For a growing city like Lagos, which is arguably the fifth largest economy in Africa, waste management still remains a challenge. Following this concern, this gathering of waste management officials seeks to deliberate ways of ensuring proper enforcement of environmental laws in order to maintain a cleaner and healthier metropolis. As you know that your health and environment is very important. Without, without those two, I think uh, we will have too many epidemic and uh, there will be too many hospitalizations, but we can prevent that when our environment is clean, when our um, waste are managed properly. Your effective management and implementation of what you have as your duties is very important to how the community and how residents perceive us as a government. Residents were asked to change their attitudes towards waste management and environmental practices, even as the state devises means of rewarding residents who dispose of their waste properly. When you enforce, enforcement is the last option. It should be the last option. But we can't just stand there and wait people do the wrong, wait for people to do the wrong thing every time. Throwing waste out of your car while you're driving, absolutely unacceptable. And that's why we Kai and, and Labour's Watch, we are now going to use cameras, time-stamp cameras, body cameras to monitor everyone that does that. And if you feel you are doing it and you are not being caught, you are caught. It's just that your judgment day is about to come. To be a PSP operator in Lagos, you must have a minimum of two trucks. So one truck, once one truck is faulty, you can still use the other one. Or you can call on any of your colleagues around to support you, to assist you at that particular time. So you have to improvise as a PSP operator. You can't say because the play, a, a particular place is not accessible, then you have to abandon them. You can't do that. In the meantime, the state's Ministry of the Environment says environmental infractions would now be prosecuted at designated magistrates' courts and calls on all stakeholders to work in synergy to transform the environment.
And that's about it on this week's edition of Green Angle. Until I come your way next time, remember, together we can build a sustainable world. I am Esther Mokwariola. Bye for now. <laughs>